Hey, what's happening? My name is Harrison, and this is going to be an Unreal Engine 4 C++ tutorial on actor line traces. Um, you never have to watch the video. There should always be a GitHub link down in the comments below, so you can always just go ahead, grab the code, and move on. But if you want to watch the video, let's go ahead and move along with it. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the final product. So let's push play. So right here we have these two cubes. This cube is drawing a line trace and it will interact with other components within inside the same actor. So this line trace is interacting with this cube, which is another uh, static mesh component, and it's drawing out that name. So let's go ahead and escape out, click it, delete it from the world scene, and let's go ahead and recreate it in C++. Again, uh, so first step, let's go ahead and create a new C++ class. Right click, new C++ class, choose actor, next, um, I'll call it my actor trace. Oh, no, right. Create new class. All right, the engine just created the class files for us. In the header file, let's create two mesh variables so we can easily add meshes inside the editor. U property, edit anywhere, I mean visible anywhere rather. It's going to be a use static mesh component. Uh, don't forget the star for the pointer and call it mesh one. We're going to go ahead and copy that. We want an identical second U property variable. Just change the name to mesh two. Uh, save that and move it along into the .cpp file. In the .cpp file, I think the first thing we should do is include draw debug helpers. That will draw the green line indicating the line trace. Uh, hashtag include draw debug helpers. .h. Now let's move down into our init function where we're going to set some default values. Uh, mesh one. That's going to equal create default sub object. Going to be a use static mesh component. Let's go ahead and add some text. I'm just going to call it mesh one and end it with a semicolon. I'm going to set it as the root component. Root component equals mesh one. Now let's do the same thing for mesh two. Mesh two equals create default. Uh, Create default sub object. Again, same thing. Use static mesh component. Um, let's add some text. And we're going to call it mesh2. End it with a semicolon. Mesh2 setup attachment. So a root component. That should be it for all the our default values. Now the rest of our logic is going to happen every frame inside the tick function. There's some logic here. I have my notes to the right side of me, so I'll be referring to those as I type it out. Uh, the first thing we want to do is create an f hit result variable, so we can track what we're hitting. I'm going to call it out hit. Uh, next we want to do is get the starting location of where the line is going to start. Um, you can do it anywhere, but I'm going to do it from the actor's location. So wherever we drop it, drag and drop it into the world scene, that's where it's going to start. So it's going to be f vector. F vector start equals get actor location. Now we want starting variables or I think in, in order to make this a working example, I'm going to kind of offset the line trace a little bit so it doesn't interact with itself, it kind of misses itself. I think there's also parameters to miss that, but I just kind of want to make it a little bit more visible and uh, kind of play around with the parameters a little bit. So let's go ahead and change it a little bit. Uh, start Z, uh, we're going to add 50 units to it. Uh, start X. We're also going to make it a little bit bigger so it's uh, not at the very bottom of the actor. Uh, 
or the X one will move it 200 units out and the Z one will add it so it's not at the bottom. Let's get the forward vector so the line's always moving out forward of wherever the actor is placed so it's not going out sideways or backwards. Uh, it's going to be get actor forward vector. We want to end it at some point. This line will have an ending point, so it's going to be f vector end equals it's going to be forward vector times 500 and it'll be plus start so wherever it starts from the starting point we want to go wherever the forward vector is and go and multiply that by 500 so we go out that far from the forward vectors direction. Uh, what's next? We're gonna create a standard collision parameter variable that we can use later on in the line trace function. Um, F collision query params and we're gonna call it collision params. Now we want to draw the line so we, just as a visual representation. Not necessary, but it's good to visualize what we're doing. Get world, it's going to start, end. So it's going to start and end in the same place that the line trace does. We're going to color it green. Fill out the rest of the parameters. Um, it doesn't always have to be visible like there's other uh, videos where I set this parameter to true so it never disappears but in this case since we're drawing it every frame it can disappear as soon as it's drawn because it'll just be redrawn in the next frame so it'll look like it's always there and I'm gonna give it a width of five units just to make it a little bit thicker so let's go um, bool is hit did we hit something? That's gonna equal actor line tray single. We're gonna make the hit result equal our variable out hit. Um, it's gonna go from the the trace is gonna start, then end. It's gonna interact with ECC world static. World static. Collision params. And that should be good. So now, if we do get a true back, if is hit is true, let's print out to the screen what we hit. So we got a little bit a little bit more information on it. Um, if G engine. Now let's print it out. G engine. Add on screen debug message. Uh, what's next? Uh, negative one. Have it appear for one second. Um, where's that? There we go. F color. Let's make it red. F string print. F. What is this? Uh, the comp being hit is percent sign S. So now we want to get the name, and that's out hit or we want to point to the out hit we want to point to the actor that we just hit that's going to be out hit dot get component and then it's going to be get name so there's a lot there but we're just kind of whatever we hit we're getting that component and we're printing out the name so let's compile it let's see if we get any errors and then adjust from there
All right, so the compile failed. Let's check it out. Syntax error. Do, 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 do. U engine um, add on screen debug. Debug. Debug message. Yeah, debug message isn't really a thing. So we got debug message. I think we're okay here. Let's try it one more time. Let's see if that one kind of clears it up. Compile failed again. Error syntax error in line 45. Uh, do I have one too many things going on here? Or am I missing one? No, it's on line 45. Uh, yeah, I've got one more parenthesis there. That's not necessary. All right, cool. The compile was successful. Let's drag and drop it in and let's make it happen. So my actor trace, drag it in. Let's go ahead and add some cubes to our meshes. Cube one, cube two. I'm gonna drag and drop, <coughs> drag this up. <coughs> I'm gonna do, uh, over here on the details panel, I'm gonna click mesh two. So I'm only holding that one. I'm not dragging the entire actor. I'm just dragging this one component. So I'm gonna drag that one out, drag it up, uh, push play. And now you can see that this line is interacting with that cube and it's printing out its name to the screen. So thank you so much for watching. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.